So this is just some of the beauty that can exist right here in Vancouver and just in a little creek and a little neighborhood and it has a backyard and very lush, very green. This little creek is year round. It's Chicken Creek. It has crawdads and it's just full of abundance around it. Blackberries all around that, that go cherry trees and peach trees in the back. There's lots of apple trees and a nice just personal garden with carrots, broccoli, lettuce, onions, and it's been producing like crazy. This is our first one. It's early July and we we're already on our second round of plants and just notice the abundance that occurs that can occur just in your own backyard and it's very exciting uh, to see this kind of growth. I also have a ton of strawberries that are, are going with our roses here and peppers um, as well and so we've really enjoyed having this and living here. We've lived here for a year now it's just been great. Um, you know, our concern is not this backyard or, or the beauty, it's people having access to places like this and the ability just to, and knowledge to be able to do this in their own time and <clears throat> know that they can grow some of their own food and enjoy it and that it's healthy in the process, it's healthy to eat it, and that it can actually create great conversations with neighbors and opportunities for collaboration on things and I'll grow one thing and you grow another and we'll share our abundance together and it's just been a great way to be new neighbors in this community. You'll notice my my neighbor here has about 10 apple trees who are all producing mass amounts of apples or my apple trees are not producing anything and so it's just great that we're going to have that opportunity to share with each other and um, provide some food and then all that extra to go to other neighbors or people in need. I'm excited about that. What I'm going to show you though is as I leave this spot and start to drive down the street you're going to see a very stark change within a mile of what we have access to here um, within our neighborhood to what someone might have access to just a short mile away. So I'm trying to keep the location kind of secret just so I'm not exposing my neighbors to anything or anything that's going to be online but you know a lot of what we would normally call revitalization in this area just people really trying to upkeep their lawns and their trees and redo their houses and rebuild things that whole curb appeal component and uh, really trying to bring some more visual beauty into the area which is great because every time that we're out there working on our properties we're able to converse with each other and get to know each other. This is going to pull us out on 78th Street in Hazeldale here and again um, I want you just to see the, the change of, of trees and some of the feel um, that happens as you cross this threshold when we... I'm new to this area and um, you know, I didn't know any of the history back here. I didn't know the difference between Hazeldell and, and Vancouver or anything like that. And uh, there was some concern from other family members of where we were moving to who were from the area. And we said, oh, you know, it's not a big deal. And um, there, there is a, a certain perception of harm or of, of lack or of poverty in this area that I don't know if it exists or not but there's definitely maybe more a historical view that that this is not the safest place to bring kids but we've greatly enjoyed the area um, with our family so again I just want to drive a little bit here you can see a lot of um, new construction the smaller trees and the stuff they've done to really build up this area commercially um, there's a new building over here, Super Supplements, and um, some restaurants and stuff, which has really been nice. We're on the west side of I-5 right now, and again, we're going to cross over. When I, when I came down here, people said, oh, you know, make sure you live on the west side of, of I-5. It's kind of like crossing the railroad tracks, and um, to another part of town when you go to the east side of it on certain levels, and again, I, I, 
I haven't experienced that, especially with dealing with the people. Everyone has been so great and again, being a new person and being pretty objective, I've really enjoyed living here and the people that I've been able to meet and the business owners I've been able to interact with and um, I, we really love it. And I think there's kind of a deep-rooted uh, history or staying there on, on this area because people, I don't know what it was before I got here, but for some reason, there's, there's just this perception of don't live here, uh, don't be here, it's not good people here. And I, I really like to help break that mode because regardless of the fancy buildings or if it's strip mall kind of feel or whatever else, it doesn't, that doesn't mean the people are bad. Just because a building is old or, uh, you know, the trees are different um, or the income level is different doesn't reflect on who the people are. It really just reflects on the area, and there's always opportunity to to grow new plants and to do new things and to clean things up if people are willing to do so. This is a good example. This area here underneath the bridge uh, about three weeks ago was filled with trash and just a lot of trash in these, these general areas, <clears throat> and it was cleaned up. Department of Transportation came in because community members said, hey, we need your help on this. We need you to help clean this up, and uh, they came in. This is a story here, the Exchange Recovery Store, who's worked hard to put this in this location to help people. And this abandoned dealership right here, actually, they, the people from Exchange have been working hard to clean this area up and to um, really clean up this lot, clean up the, it was all weeds two weeks ago. And, and I just wanna point out Bill and Vicki Smith here who own Exchange Recovery Store and have helped this community a lot in terms of substance abuse treatment and options for people and people who are down in their luck or have had, had hard times. You have a compassionate business here who's saying, you know what, we care about you. We're going to come out and we're going to do whatever we can to support you, to give you a hand, you know, a hand up. Um, there's that kind of phrase of people don't want to hand out. They want to hand up. They, they want and need some support, not just the gift. And so <clears throat> this group has been working hard. And again, I wanna just show this parking lot real quick. Again, a huge area. This, since I've moved here, has been abandoned um, for a couple of years now. And literally two weeks ago, was just full of weeds, um, kinda of as you can see in the back here. Um, this area is what the whole parking lot looked like. Um, and groups have come in and tried to clean it up, trying to sell it, trying to work with it. And that's just been great because again, visually people judge a community by what they see rather than by the people who live there. And uh, when people see things, they assume things and that's what we don't want. We want people to look and, and see beyond maybe some old paint and some, some weeds and look at the people who are living and working here every day. I want you to notice though too that you know, we've gone from my lush garden to pretty much concrete, cement, and uh, and shops. Um, the trees are different, the feel is different, and again, that was a mile. And, uh, you know, as you go down this area, this is 78th and 99th, and people talk about this area, and I'm gonna show you on my way to work here what it looks like to go down I-5 and onto Fourth Plain. And as you go down Fourth Plain and some of the look and feel that you have there, um, there's been great work in the Hazelbell area and it's been really exciting to see just over the last couple years that I've been here. But again, there's there's concern about areas. You, you still have, you know, places that are not upkept. And again, it's the let's look beyond that and go talk to the people and work with the people so that um, we're not judged by the way things look and we can still build community in these areas. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch off here for a moment, drive down I-5 a little ways, and then you'll be able to see what that looks like on my way to work to 4th um, Plain Corridor. I just, this is more about a narrative piece here rather than the visual. I just wanted to be on camera or have my voiceover saying, you know, our state just passed and legalized marijuana grow and processing and sales, retail sales, one of the first in the country to do it the way that we're doing it. And again, I, that is concerning for neighborhoods who are in a fragile sense of, of change and growth that 
when you add a substance to a community that is addictive and harmful, it it preys on vulnerable populations. Uh, the substance is a dangerous substance. Marijuana can cause a lot of harm, and I just am so concerned of what that's going to mean for us here. Being in county land and, and what the county can and can't do about this process and what the state is mandating, you know, we talk about farms and we talk about access to healthy food and and businesses are going to be opening up pot operations right here. They're going to be opening up, you know, farms for marijuana that could be used for gardens. It could be used to help people who are hungry, but instead they're going to go make money off of a uh, drug, an illegal drug, and that's concerning for us. It's concerning for what that means for these neighborhoods. And it's concerning, as you just saw, we left the exchange store. They they purposely put themselves there because they offer services in the top floor of that building for local members who have dealt with drugs and alcohol and other sorts of addictions, like gambling and pornography and those kind of things. And, and they're just now starting to rebuild and we're gonna just add in a new legal substance. You know, people say, oh, it's just like alcohol, it's not a problem. Alcohol is a problem, it's one of our number one problems, especially in disadvantaged neighborhoods where you see more alcohol retail stores, you see more access to cigarettes, you see more special deals for malt liquor that are, are higher concentrations of alcohol. This isn't this, you know, the microbrewery and winery kind of feel, it's a, it's a four loco kind of feel for alcohol cheap and high quantity and we're concerned that it's going to be the same for marijuana that it's going to you know it's going to be concentrated in areas that are in the process of growth to get out of the the bonds that they've been in because of the place that they've lived or the income that they've had or, or the addictions that have occurred and you know an addiction is widespread it, that's one of the scary things about drug addiction is it doesn't matter what color you are, where you come from, what language you speak, or how much money you make, it attacks the individual and attacks their ability to function. And uh, we're going to just add another one onto the, the fire here, and we're really concerned about that. And I just don't want this land and this place and this growth to be hindered because people want to make money off of pot. So that's my two cents worth this is us driving down i-5 right now and we're going to be rolling on to fourth plane here again the great trees and lots of green and it, it makes you enjoy living in the northwest when you can look across and and see the the beauty that's there um and we also live in a place and this has been a lot of sunshine that you're going to see a lot of just undergrowth as well because it's hard to stay up with it's hard to um, maintain it but again you've got really cute wonderful little homes here obviously that thing's been around for a while and it's a great um, kind of craftsman style barn style home and there's a lot of them in this neighborhood a beautiful place that in Portland you would say oh my gosh everyone wants to live there because look at the beauty of these homes and here again being new to the area and just asking people as we were looking for homes and you know, there's a lot of concern to live down off Fourth Plain. There's a lot of, ooh, don't don't live down there. Don't be a part of Central Vancouver because it's scary or there's gangs or there's violence or there's... And, you know, again, that's... I think that's a misconception. I don't think that's true. From my experience, I've been able to come down and enjoy these areas, enjoy these homes, enjoy these properties and these businesses in a lot of different ways. And... I, you know, every community has problem houses. The number of drug houses in our all across the county is ridiculous. And, you know, the the number of things that go on in neighborhoods, that's based on some individuals and it's a minority of, of people who are, are causing problems. The majority of people love where they live and they are caring folks and they want to support each other and work hard and take care of their kids and just be independent and, and have a life so um, again I, there's from an outside point of view I feel that there is a uh, this myth acceptance that is allowing people to put people in boxes and place an identity on them that they are less than others because of where they live and you know there are people that are scared they see things like graffiti that I just drove by there 
Um, they see things that uh, might scare them. And what I've loved hearing because of my work in substance abuse prevention, my work with violence prevention, I've been able to hear the stories of the neighbors who live here that say, you know what? Yeah, there might be graffiti and we can scream and yell at those kids or we can go out and talk to them. We can go out and, and be, you know, engaging with them. And places like here, Vancouver Central Park, it doesn't have to be a place of violence and fear. It can be a place of family and friends. And it's, you know, a lot of our systems don't think about compassion as a way to engage others. But our people do. They have neighborhood associations just off to my right here um, along Mill Plain and 18th Street that have said, you know what, we're going we're gonna to make a difference one person at a time. We're just going to go out house to house. We're going to talk to each other. And that's great. Um, you know, again, I want to drive down Fourth Plain. You'll you'll see people down here along the bus stations. Um, you'll see properties that are a little bit worn down. You're going to see a lot more if people are out this time of morning. Um, I notice oftentimes a lot more people smoking cigarettes down here than I notice in Salmon Creek where I used to live, or out in Camas where I I, I go for work sometimes. Um, you'll definitely see some overgrown areas and, and kind of some, this is a good example of graffiti um, and just kind of some of the rundown fences and stuff. But again, if all I look at is the fences, then that's all I'm going to see. I'm not going to notice some of the great things that are going on. This is Warriors Field here. This is the International Festival Field that's going to go on here in a couple of weeks. Great place. A couple thousand people come out to just you know, share with each other and, and hang out and learn about all the great food that's right here. You have specialty markets here that most of the county and city don't even know about. Um, I do want to show that glass pipes is right there and that there's a smoke shack now. Um, but here you have a place of a bunch of different Hispanic types of foods in a market that's excellent. And I talk to people who go there and they just love it. Here's a good example of um, a bunch of kids out in a park. I just want to show this because this is going to show the community aspect. People say, oh, don't go to the parks down there. Don't go hang out down there. Um, it's scary or it's wrong. And um, this is great. This is the Washington uh, State University Cougars. There's some staff there. Um, I might jump out real quick and go talk to these guys. I'm going to put you on pause. Hold on a sec here. Uh, so can you tell me what you guys are doing here? We have a little red thing. I don't know. Well, FBI, you're all under arrest. Well, I, I'm sorry. I should introduce myself. I'm, I'm Sean. I work in substance abuse prevention uh, for the county. I do uh, Prevent Coalition. We do drug and alcohol prevention for kids. And I also work with a bunch of groups who do work along Fourth Plain. We just did a big project along Fourth Plain looking at alcohol and tobacco advertising that's related to kids and when they walk in the store and how many they have. And that's so smart. There's that's a so good that you're doing that. Thanks. You know, and we, there's Wait, a concern do down the here. International Festival? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I run the, I'm building their website and I do their posters for International oh, okay. Fest. Yeah, I work with Mark Majora. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So I work with Mark Majora quite a bit. Um, yeah, I go to church with Mark. Oh, nice. Excellent. <laughs> I won't Great. Long day. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things is trying to look at, I, I work a lot with Safe Communities Task Force as well, so they're the gang violence task force here in the community. And one of the concerns is gangs taking over parks. So as I'm driving down the street um, talking about access healthy food and stuff, and I see a bunch of people in a park, I'm like, oh, this is exactly what we want to show, that people are using the parks, and there's a bunch of kids playing, and this isn't a dangerous place to be. It's actually a really awesome, fun place to be. So I'm curious on what Parks and Rex is doing, and if you can just kind of let me know. Okay, I'll just, I'll just start. You ask me yeah. questions if you need to or whatever, so... Basically what we do is we have the camp for about, let's see, from like 10.30 to 2.30, that's fine, go ahead, okay. 10.30 to 2.30, and um, we like, we'll have uh, games in the morning, like we'll have uh, kickball, um, sometimes like crafts and things for the little kids, but we actually have themed weeks. And so like, let's say this week is the um, sports week, next week's going to be superhero week, um, oh, we, nice. Superhero we, week? Uh-huh. That's and, great. And then we're going to, we're also incorporating this year like a, um, kind of, it's, it's called like character, character count, um, but I'm just trying to help imply like fairness and um, like 
uh, how do you say, it? like caring, and there's, there's a list that you're just kind of teaching them character to, to instill in them, like you yeah. know, something that they may or may not get at home, but maybe if we can help push it a little bit. Yeah. And so we do activities that like try to ex- exemplify that too. Um, we have free lunches, and the community can come out. Like um, it can be families, it can be adults, it can even be like you know, people in the park that are the homeless or you know or drug or some kind of a rehab or something that people are are coming out of yep um we one thing i'm really proud of for this is that we now have some of the kids that used to come to the camp as participants are now my volunteers and they're actually some of my best mentors they're not quite old enough to work can get paid but they are old enough to be my volunteers and they play a lot with the um, like the boys and the older kids and then they mentor them to show them no you know that behavior is not okay or hey you know this, let's do this just let's just chill don't, don't get upset about it and now we're working hard to keep them out of like games and things like that because we see the potential they have if they'll just keep going in the right direction yeah that's you know it's interesting. so in my work we, we work a lot around risk and protective factors and we talk about what are kids exposed to in the community and family that's going to cause more risk, risky behaviors, and what's going to help protect them. And and this is exactly what we call protective factors. Everything you just mentioned, building values, mentoring, positive role modeling. I mean, all the stuff that they may not get at home. It's just, that's exactly what we want to see because what we see when that happens is less likelihood, dramatically less likelihood of getting involved in risky behaviors, violence, gangs, bullying, substance abuse, you know, that sexual behaviors or risky sexual behaviors. It's across the board. Like this really matters. It's great. So I'm so excited you guys are doing it. Do you have a card or anything on the side? Um, if not, I'll run and grab one of mine because to give you. Okay. okay. Um, I can give you information for like if if you need like verification or know more about this program that we're doing. Yeah, more about instead of the videos, just okay. substance abuse and what we're doing and what you're doing to make sure okay. we're connected because we okay. we're kind of a. Our program, we're federally funded, and um, we are we, the government, our okay. city, and yeah. And we do a lot of um, educational support for our schools and programs on what is substance abuse prevention. How do you incorporate what you're doing? The appropriate language for everything you just said, all those pieces. So we'd love to just kind of support you and let other people know what you're doing. And would you ever be willing, or would you want the desire to come in and talk to these kids? Because we're always having people from yeah. the community come and just kind of like Hero Week next week is about super heroes and yes. prince and princes but i'm also bringing in like oh, firemen policemen awesome. you know to say yeah. here are your heroes instead of being afraid of the police you need to see that they are there to protect you you do something wrong you know what i mean that right. there is that consequence but you need to know that they're there to to protect you and that they're you're safe with them Excellent. and things like that and then the firemen of course i mean just anything that they're like the little kids are excited oh, yeah. about teachers you know sometimes they get ideas about teachers and you just want to see different you know, yeah. different things. It's Especially, like, in the summertime, to see a teacher, and they're like, oh, you're a real person, and you yes. care about things, and you're yes. not just someone who's going to... you're gonna, funny, and you're yeah. not going to get on to me for not sitting in a surf ball illustrator. Yeah, or, totally. Or, so. Yeah, we, we would love to do that kind of stuff, especially, too, if, with, with staff. Okay. We'd love to do staff trainings, because it's uh, what to look out for with, like, mental health and substance abuse, and how do you talk to someone if they disclose to you, because if you're not a counselor, yet, how do you direct them to resources? Yeah. And All we have kind of to stuff. report everything. Yeah. You know, I'm sure you're mandated to report that. Supervi- it goes to um, supervisor, but it goes up to the next supervisor. But still, you know, just responding. Because what if that kid finally trusts only you? Right. And they release that to you, and then you're still... And we tell them, we say, you know what? We want you to know you're always welcome to share things with us. But we, we are asked, you know, like, depending on how you approach the situation. But, you know, you need... We're going to need to tell someone that can help you. That's yeah. how we put it. Not like, we're in trouble or your parents are in trouble. But yeah. we need to give you some help here, you know. Yeah. And so to have more resources for us would be wonderful um, so yeah I'll give you my supervisor's um, number because it's not only this camp but there's several other camps that oh, we awesome. have right now we have like in John Ball um, Hagen or something like that um, there's like four or five other camps and those will start with a meal a short little meal you know like to serve for just a little bit for the community and then they have like three or four hours where anybody you don't have to register you just come in and oh, nice. just to again take back the park to be a positive influence in these neighborhoods. So I'll get you that information or whatever. And I can write my name on it too so you know. Yeah, that would be great. (laughs) Have you all, because that's... So Safe Communities Task Force is our gang violence task force. Have you all worked with them before? You know, I'm thinking 
doing some, like, um, because of the way, like, a lot of, like, this used to be horribly riddled with, like, yeah. gang stuff, and it's, like, so much better this year, and they're saying that, like, one of the guys that worked for us previously, he works for the sheriff's department, mm -hmm. and so he comes, and sometimes he kind of gives us heads up about, you know, just be careful, and he goes, actually, right now, there's no one really fighting for this part. It's yeah. pretty open, and yeah. so that's an accomplishment, too, because yeah. we've had a lot of threatening um, activity to happen with the kids here before, you know, with, with the gang just straight in the middle and threatening another kid of mine that was working right. for me, you know, so I'm like, oh, I don't want that to <laughs> Yeah, no here. kidding. So. Well, and it, I think it shows there's been a lot of work on the neighborhood association, especially along 18th Street and here yeah. about parks. Yeah, I know all that. Yeah. I'm the co-chair for the neighborhood association. Oh, excellent. So, yeah. So I'm I, also I, on the fourth plan improvement uh, project. Oh, perfect. So, yeah, you definitely know all the stuff that's going on, that revitalization kind of stuff. Yeah. And what we've noticed from the gang task force side is that the way the neighborhood associations are engaging in their parks has made more of a distant difference than any law enforcement has ever done. And law enforcement, we work a lot with the sheriffs and VPD, and they're saying this is what's changing our community is neighborhood associations going out, reclaiming space. There's been uh, a lot of work just doing outreach to gang members saying, hey, come, come join us instead of fight us. Like, come be a part of what we're doing. You can play and goof around and be a kid again. That's what those volunteers are. That's what it's I mean, they're not in a gang yet, but they're yeah. headed that way. Yeah. And so we tell them, you know what, you're worth something. And so let's, we want to show you that you can offer and not have to go to that yeah. stuff. How are you doing outreach to the kids to get them here? Oh man, well, yeah, yeah. There, was, there was some postcards, but honestly, like, this is, this camp's been here probably for about, I guess now going on, like, about five years, okay. five, six years, so word of mouth, the same, um, there's a lot of families, you know, that cousins mm -hmm. or neighbors, and they hear about it, and honestly, like, it's, we have to turn away applicants now because we're too, we're beyond full, and we can only have so many for one per each right. 10 kid and then we have inclusion we have this uh, special needs kids that come okay so one-on-ones you know for that and uh so a lot of, usually people parents are just like is there openings today can i come they're just uh, wanting so bad yeah, to be yeah. here because it is a peaceful place they get to have fun we watch over them we discipline them as far as like you know you bullying oh we're gonna you know and the way we handle that is we make them go through this um it's a sheet of questions, but it makes them say, like, what did I do, and why did I do that, and could I have made a better choice? Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, and then the parents have to sign off on it that that, you know, so we're trying to do a little bit of the yeah. counseling, but we're not counselors, you know what I mean? Right. But just that, that's what our supervisors have given us to process with the kids. Because yeah. I think a lot of times they're just like, ah, you're being a jerk, just go, you right. know what I mean? Go to the detention or go here, and they don't get really Right, they don't have accountability so. or reflection, mm -hmm. right? But though you're saying that's a big component of social-emotional learning to understand that you might have impacted someone negatively and how does that mean what does that make you and that that's great it's so good to hear it i knew the programs like this existed it's so great though to see it in and, and, action and, and, yeah and, i mean just sit standing i know that just for the camera i know you guys can't really see a lot of this because i'm trying to not show too many people's faces but there is probably what 40 kids here maybe yeah up just to 60, so. up to 60 and they're just playing like crazy we got soccer going on kids playing on the playground a bunch of adult <laughs> staff here engaging with them it's just and it's a gorgeous day in the trees and in the sun it's just beautiful so excellent yeah i'll take your info for sure we one of the best things that we do is we we're a connector okay. so we connect similar groups who are doing similar things we do a lot of volunteer coordination to get people to engage especially in mentoring programs and stuff I sit on Safe Communities Task Force, Clark County Mentoring Roundtable, Substance Abuse Advisory Boards. Okay, that's, you know that's part of my. Oh, yeah, I work with Anne quite a bit, yeah. I get all her emails. Nice, yeah. So, Partnerships to Healthy Neighborhood, uh -huh. uh, that coalition just down the street here, we work a lot with them. Okay. So, um, and I, I'm at ESD 112 right next to Fort Vancouver, so uh -huh. this is our backyard, too. Yeah. And so, we like to see what's going on. So, and this is just to tell you a little bit more about. Again, kids just playing soccer in the park. This goes to everything I was just talking about, about looking beyond 
some of the problems and looking into the people who live here and these kids are just kids. They're not poor kids, they're not ethnic kids, they're not anything. They're just kids having fun in a park and I think that's important to show and important of what that means to reclaim our parks. Um, that they don't need to be violent, they don't need to have issues, only drug deal dropped or anything else, just fun parts for kids. Um, what's your first name? Taylor. Taylor, okay Taylor. So tell me a little bit about what you do with this group and how you got involved. Uh, we play games, we do lots of sports and we do crafts and uh, I got started, I first started a couple years ago when I was 12 volunteering and then my bosses was like hey do a day camp and then summer I was like okay and then I came here this is my second summer and I love it and I love being a role model to the kids and making a difference cool so now you're official staff right yeah. so you start off volunteer now yep. staff uh, what kind of training do you go through to be staff we have to take training on CPR to make sure we know how to help kids if they get hurt. And we also have training on just kind of what to do if in situations that we may come across, like homeless people or you know, um, if we have to call the police and things like that, just kind of normal, general okay. information. Do you have any favorite stories or memories from the past couple of years of doing this? Or just instances or certain connections you've made with kids or anything like that? I have a lot of kids that I've made a really good bond with and they come and run up and hug me every day and awesome. they come say bye to me when they leave and actually a couple of days ago we had a water incident that we had a pipe break and so that will always yeah. stay in my memory as when I flooded the park awesome. but that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, cool. Um, how do you see this kind of impact in you in the long term? I mean, is this something you want to continue to do and does it encourage you to work with kids? Or is it something that this has been a great summer job and you kind of do something else as you grow older? I've always loved working with kids and definitely working here makes me always want to come back because I see a lot of potential in a lot of these kids and I want to be able to be that positive role model in their lives and help better them for the future and it also helps me because that's what I want to do when I um, grow up is I want to be a special needs teacher. Oh, nice. And so I love Excellent. working. I want to work with kids for the rest of my life. And so this helps me uh, gain the experience of being around the kids. Excellent. Oh, do you live in this area? I live in Ridgefield. Okay. So kind of, but not really. I've grown right. up in Vancouver all my life. Okay. But, uh, when these past two summers is the first time that I've been in this particular area okay. experiencing life down here. Nice. Excellent. Great. And what do you think about just this area in Fourth Point Corridor? I believe it's an up-and-coming. Like, there's a lot of things that can be fixed, but I believe it has a lot of potential and that yes. if we have a lot of positive influences, then we can definitely make it a better place for the kids awesome. in the community. Awesome. That's great. And how old are you? 17. 17. Wow. Very articulate. Good job. Very good job. What was your name, first name? Taylor. You're also Taylor? <laughs> yeah. So Taylor and Taylor, awesome. Yeah. That works well. Yeah. Um, so you said you're a sign language interpreter. Uh, how'd you get involved with this group? Um, I actually started doing it in high school and I kind of fell in love with it. And so I took it for two years and then I TA'd for two, or no, for another year. So I've pretty much been doing it for three years and then I have, I've always just done it for either fun or for a job. Nice, so are they, did they come out and like find you or did you know about this as a workplace to come and um, I originally services? applied for it and then um, I just had it as like a second language and yeah. so they ended up putting me in inclusions and then um, there's two kids that aren't here yet but they um, I interpret for them and they go out and usually do their own thing oh, but like nice. when we do like um, like the baseball thing we have going on I interpret for them for that and um, a lot of the kids on the playground actually um, are trying to learn sign language and a couple of kids bring like sign language books to try to like interact with them so it's been a really oh that's cool great yeah. yeah that was my next question for you is how have other kids interacted with you who don't necessarily need that kind of interpretation but are interested in the language mm -hmm. itself that's great so you said they're bringing books they're uh -huh. getting involved they're asking questions okay, yeah, constantly asking how do I tell them this how do I say this oh that's so, awesome yeah. that's great mm -hmm. excellent um, any favorite memories of, of working here um, this is really my first year working yeah. here but it's it's been um, quite the experience actually because I've never really worked with kids mm -hmm. like kids kids so 
it's been something else. The the energy is a lot different than like working with adults. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's uh, awesome. That's so great. I'm glad we we caught you. Yeah. <laughs> that's excellent. Good. Well, thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I just met the Shemika Mayor, and so my nightmare situation would be that like I'm in the midst of something like I, where I can't kind of be genial, yeah. you know. And he's gonna walk up, and I was like, oh no, there's a camera. And then I was thinking, what if it's the news? And how do I, how do I, how do I handle this? Am I supposed to call my supervisor and make sure we're okay? All these anxieties are like just spinning, and then we never know who's gonna come in our park. Right. We're always on guard, right. and so <laughs> we're just like, oh, okay. He has like he has a bright red like lanyard thing on. He has a camera. He's just really nice. So we're going, who could this be? So that's how I was like, and can you tell us where you're from before we tell you anything? No, tell me everything first. <laughs> uh, well, I can't tell you. I, I know our mayor pretty well. Uh, he would love this. And he would just okay. come and watch. Okay. And he's so, Friday. yeah, he's coming Friday. 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 And it's Thursday on our superhero day or whatever. I'm gonna give him a cape and just awesome. lovingly, you know. Just he's very much involved. He's very personable with this kind of. Cr- so I mean, don't just, worry about no, it. he's great. Tim okay. comes to a lot of our stuff. Okay. And has been a big support of us over the years. Uh, Jack Berkman as well. Actually, all of them. Uh, Bart Hansen has been a huge supporter of our work. He loves working with kids. Bart, you know, does. I think Tim does too and Jack. So um, those are the guys that I email weekly on different things. And if I can, I'd love to say you need to go check them out. Yeah, well, they will. I mean, they will. And we'll see that what they us a lot is that you can even tease them and say they had no idea that I was coming up or whatever. But I'm um, just saying what you saw from your perspective yeah. about us, you know, you not knowing and just saying, here's what yeah. I saw, this is what I heard. You know, and that would help us and help him to know, because, you know, truth be told, you know, whenever the boss or somebody that's important comes, we're in a different yeah, mindset. Oh, these kids so. right now, they have not a clue who you are, so you're seeing them in the raw, like, yeah. running across the playground, I'm going, uh-uh, get this, 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 you know, kind of thing. So, all that good thing. You guys are doing awesome, awesome work. Thank you so much. And again, working on the substance abuse side, this is what we call protective factors. Getting kids to do this, you are lowering their risk for using substances and getting in trouble later on in life. And this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see this in every park all over the place. And if we did that, we'd see a lot less problems with drugs and alcohol. We really would. Because and it's, it's research-based. That's what's great is the more kids, these kids literally have large percentage less chance because of their one summer of experience. It's, it's And a lot crazy. of them come every summer, you yeah. know, so it just kind of builds it, it even more so. Yeah. It, or basically it, the younger siblings. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. That, that role modeling piece, I was I was in a conference all day yesterday in Seattle about the impacts of marijuana on our state. And all the research shows this huge difference. If kids are involved stuff like this, the likelihood that they'll get involved in drugs. Children that need extra help to be here can be here. Yeah. Like different handicapping. Yeah. And that's great. I, yeah, I was talking to Taylor who does sign language. That is incredible that you have an interpreter here mm-hmm. for sign language if the kids need it. And you know, I was since you were. I, I worked as a house pet for the blind for the New York. They have me working with a vision. Oh, excellent. That's Child great. Is very active. <laughs> oh, awesome. That it has a lot more information just about our camp and oh, that's the things like one. that. So. Okay. I'm going to go grab my car, too, so you guys can okay. have some me. That's excellent. I mean, it is for the parent when they come, but you know what? Better off to explain it to you. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> and that gives a lot of good just kind of logistics on it, too. Mm-hmm. And other parks that we're at. So I know you were more uh, well, this, this, this is a special thing of the mayor's because he, he made sure that this park got funding. Yeah. I, I know because I went to the state of the city address. Yeah. And uh, uh, the money that was de- collected there went towards this park. Nice. Excellent. That's great. And uh, beaches donated. Uh, people went afterwards yep. to beaches, and beaches donated money to Beaches them. does a great job for community projects. I was trying to, since you're a neighborhood association person, I've been trying to get into one of the meetings of all the associations together to talk about marijuana law. 
because uh, I've been going. Okay, uh, I contacted Anne. Yeah, Anne's the person to contact. Yeah, she hasn't got back to me yet. Um, She's been really busy with her campaign. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, you, you, you would have caught her if you'd gone to the Democrat meeting on the next <laughs> <laughs> Because she was there. Was she? Yeah. yeah. I'll try her again because we're, um, we're kind of the local experts on what the law is with the new marijuana law and what we're trying to put restrictions on. We've asked the city to put a moratorium on it and ask the county. Notice, we have a little shop right along for us playing there. I, I just drove by and saw it first time. He's a nice person. Uh, he, he, I told him we're having our picnic and he said let him know what he could donate. Yeah, yeah you know, and it's... The, the the business owners are uh, are not the problem. It's the drug itself that's the problem, you know. So yeah, well, since I don't drink, drink, drink or smoke, so <laughs> yeah, good for you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's nice meeting you. I will. I'll let the group I, I know. I was raised by an alcoholic. So. <laughs> so you've seen its effects. I am. My mom has 32 years now. Wow. That's how you do That's great. Yeah. She's going to come over here on here a week because she's a re retired nurse. Oh yeah. Uh, when they have the doctor, we'll, we'll, we'll bring over her stethoscope and blood nice. pressure, and the kids can all <laughs> That's great. play with it. Yeah, yeah perfect. It's going to be a great week. Excellent. Well, good job, guys. Today's, Way to go. Today's going to be great because we have the baseball players. Nice. Excellent. Thank you, Taylor. Good job. I need to. How's it going? That's what I figured. That's okay, I just took the phone in. Oh, and tomorrow morning, I'll check what time it opens. Uh, or if, it, if it's open late tonight. If it opens up early tomorrow, I can just race over real quick. Don't make come back and move the truck. Right, I figured, yeah. So, that's okay. This little project is the full time corridor. <clears throat> so I can't tell you about it. I was like, oh, I'm just going to do it. I drove down into Hazeldale and stuff, and I was like, oh, I'm going to drive down Fourth Plane and just kind of show Fourth Plane. So I'm driving along and I'm talking to the camera about looking beyond dilapidated places and broken down fences and looking for community and community groups as I'm driving by this park that used to be known as a huge gang park. There's like 60 kids out there and a tent and all these staff and I'm like, what's going on? So I pull over real quick and I jump out of the car and I go up to the staff and I'm like, hey, I, I'm doing this video thing and I'm just really curious what you guys are doing. I've been here for almost an hour just talking to this. It's an amazing Vancouver Parks and Rec program. They have sign language interpreters, they have multiple staff. I got to interview some of the kids and some of the staff and it's pretty awesome to sit here in a I'm sitting at the park, it's gorgeous out of course, and this park like five years ago was just run by gangs and graffiti and now it's all awesome. So, oops, I gotta get out and get a few more fitted photos, but of their sign. But yeah, pretty, pretty amazing, exactly what we're trying to show with all these programs, so I'm excited for this. But anywho, that's what I'm doing. How's your day going? Oh, you do? Gosh. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, go get him set up, babe. <laughs> so they can... Dip. Yeah, that's that can't happen. Especially with cash on hand. Like, that can't... That's ridiculous. So... Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Good, so she's going to go down with you? Awesome, good. Okay. <laughs> good, good. Get it all cleaned up. That way we don't have to stress about it as you leave. 
so. Um, where are you right now? Oh, in your parking lot? Um, yeah, go to the 18th Street Arco and then jump back on to 500 there, I guess. Or down Mill Plain, or if you shoot across 500 and just keep going, there's that 39th Street Arco, 39th and Main. And then you can just turn around and get back on I-5. That's probably quicker. I went there the other day, and it was cheap, so. I put gas in that 4Runner this morning, too. Shell Station, because you had zero. <laughs> so, that's all right. So, good. Well, I hope that goes well. Uh, Barbara's asking what time you were going to be home. Um, and she says she's gone this weekend, so it looks like we'll be taking Winston with us. Okay. That's fine. It'll be fine out there. So, okay, great. All right, we'll have fun, I guess. <laughs> All right, love ya. Bye. Some of the programs at the park. So fun summer programs at your park. This is Evergreen Park. Just to give you an idea of the kids that are here. They're all kind of sitting down about ready to go through a lesson, it looks like, which is great because they do a lot of character building. They do a lot more than just play. This is healthy options and everything, which is great. And so we're going to show that real quick. And I wanted to show you something about this park. And just kind of how nice this looks and how clean it looks. And because they've put money towards it, they've, they've made it a priority. And of course, this is a tobacco-free zone. It's a drug-free zone. We don't want um, those kind of issues in our park. And yet, underneath the tobacco-free zone, I'm going to show you. There's a cigarette butt. And there's a cigarette butt, and literally underneath the sign. And so you have, again, people who respect the park, who enjoy it, who play in it, who care about it, and the people who don't respect the park and they don't care about the laws and the rules, and that's, that's a problem. But again, if you look around, there's no trash, really. It's really well maintained. The city's doing a good job at this, and I just want to applaud them for their efforts. Uh, with this city park and the neighborhood association that supports it. All right. Can I just tell you how awesome of an experience that was to be able to sit and talk? I know it was a lot of just ground shots because, you know, they're talking. I wanted, they didn't want their faces all on camera because they just wanted to feel more comfortable to talk. But that was just awesome. It was awesome to see that kind of work going on in our community, those kids, the city parks and recs teaching kids how to be stronger individuals, healthy individuals, positive role models. Those stories were incredible of having people grow up in this system and just want to go out and help others. That's exactly what we're talking about. That is an asset-based community. That is the people who have the power and influence to help others who are helping those, and especially our kids. I, I can't tell you how awesome and exciting and invigorating that was to now go out and promote. I'm going to go back and I'm going to email our mayor and all of our community members and say, hey, look at this program. I want you to hear about the experience I just went through and and what they're doing for these kids. You know, something off camera that was said and I kind of showed you earlier in the video is that there's a new pot shop down the street about two blocks away from that park. There's a new shop that's going to sell drug paraphernalia and we don't know if they're going to try to open up shop for other things but again it's this this juxtaposition of kids and family and, and becoming a better place and then drugs right there the, some of these places that I'm driving by here have some of the worst track records of selling alcohol to minors and promoting cigarettes to kids and you know drug paraphernalia and everything else and you go man 
how much harder is it to live here with exposure to things like that compared to up the road a couple of miles and what makes it amazing is groups like that that Vancouver Parks and Rec summer park program neighborhood association so was there members were there family members were there people were coming in again I just drove what two blocks and I want to show you I don't want to knock down the business here but you're using cartoon characters as pot shop and again that's just ridiculous it shouldn't be this way you have Alice in Wonderland characters and crazy colors to sell drug paraphernalia, to sell marijuana pipes, to sell medical marijuana cards. And yes, they do sell medical marijuana cards here and they promote them. And I'm actually gonna come back and try to take a photo of that with this guy. I gotta keep going because of the... But this is a big, big concern for us. You have all these wonderful efforts who are trying to do these amazing things and at the same time, you've got groups and people um, who are, are hurting that because of their business, because they want to promote an illegal substance, so they want to promote drug use just to make money. And I just applaud Mitzi and Judy and these folks and Taylor and Taylor, those two girls who were able to volunteer their time and now our staff, these kind of projects. That is exactly the kind of people that we're talking about beyond the fence line, beyond the broken down feeling or broken down history is you have people who care and people who want to make a difference. Uh, this street now I'm driving down is uh, Fort Vancouver High School and I'm lucky to work right next to Fort Vancouver and a lot with the people there and some of the work that they do. Uh, the medical magnet program is here at Fort Vancouver. There's a great horticultural program here for food. Medical magnet program is an amazing program. Colleen Dunnigan runs it and uh, her kids are just awesome. They do some incredible things in the community. They just held a heart screening day. They screened over 300 kids in the school. They found three of them actually that needed uh, specific follow-ups because of heart conditions that they didn't previously know about. And they worked with through a grant from Walmart and other partners to really say, hey, we want to look at the health of these kids. And they're saving lives through that process. They're getting to know things so that those kids can, can plan for it and be better. As I'm rolling up here, I definitely want to show you this. This is a, one of our community gardens. And I'm going to show you a piece of this. Again, what I liked about today's um, movement is we went from my personal garden and we went from my backyard and the little creek that I had over in Hazeldell and a little kind of wonderful place I live in. And we drove through a couple of different neighborhoods and we drove through and we got to experience, we got to see some things that we don't necessarily like, some graffiti. We got to see some rundown places and we try to look beyond them and look at the people who are trying to make it better. And then we got to fall onto that amazing park experience and what those kids and those people are doing for those families. And, uh, and now we're ending at another garden and we're gonna end at another place of, of community members who are trying to make a difference. Let me get out of my car here and show you this. So I'm gonna show you the expanse of this garden. It starts down here on the right and how big this community garden is. It is massive. There must be a hundred plots in here. What the, Where I'm looking at right now, this little piece, if you look at this little track, that's the original size of the garden. When I started working here two years ago, I drove by here because that's my office building just behind it. The garden was that size, probably maybe 25 plots. Uh, lots, of, lots of vegetation, obviously doing a very good job. It's great soil, but over the past, two years, so really just two growing seasons, it grew and grew. Earlier this year, they went to about this size, and I saw when they first tilled up the ground, and they put up the, the ropes, it was about this size. And just in the last two months, they've expanded from that line all the way across. So if you think of the amount of food coming out of this small plot of land and the, the impact that this is having, 
not just impact on access to healthy foods, right? It's, I'm amazed there's no one out here right now. Usually when I drive by in the mornings, this is packed full of people. People watering, people talking, uh, different cultures of different races, different languages. They're out here, they're engaging with each other, they're working in the ground, they're teaching each other different practices. I've seen some small little elderly women who are out here working hard next to their grandchildren who are, they're teaching them their methods of farming, their methods of, of growing, the importance of the land. I'll try to get a little bit more above shot here. This is incredible and it's exactly what we're talking about in this project. It's exactly the thing that we want to show. People want to engage. They have the skills to engage. They often don't have the opportunity to engage with each other. If this land was not available, if someone didn't come out and till it, if someone didn't come out and help maintain it and provide water for it, provide the wood and the rope and the stakes, that opportunity would not exist. And you would see a field like this. This is across the street. Again, huge, beautiful field that's filled with flowers right now. That's fine, but it would be just like that. But instead they said, you know what, no, we want to do something else. We want to create something else. So they created this, this garden here, and it's just gorgeous. I don't know if you can see that there's chairs out there, people come and sit. There's birds in here right now. I'm seeing a ton of different vegetables. I, I see pumpkins and corn, carrots, peas, a ton of tomatoes, uh, lots of different um, chard and and broccoli, um, just some amazing produce coming out of here. And again, this isn't going to a store, this is going to people's tables. And so that's kind of where I want to end today. I'm going to go back, engage with those kids a little bit more, um, and thank them with some stuff. And I just, again, I, I hope that we're able to truly embrace this opportunity. And I hope we can find ways to provide more opportunity. When people are ready and willing. All they need is the opportunity to do so. And to me, that is the American dream. That is freedom. The freedom isn't from, I want to do whatever I want to do at any time I want. The freedom is to engage with others with free voice. The freedom is to have a community that is not oppressed through drugs or alcohol or through rules and regulations. The freedom is to work with each other and learn from each other and literally create abundance. So I've just been excited. I've learned so much over the past two years working with these groups and I'm just excited to be a part of this conversation and I hope we continue on this path that we've been doing and I really hope the things of like marijuana don't replace this opportunity. You have fertile land here and amazing grows and I hope it stays fruits and vegetables and, and community and not just drugs so thanks again